to Overdrive AF, the official podcast of Overdrive Fitness. My name is Teddy Gerzon, and I'm joined by Gina Marie Gerzon. What's up? I feel like we're dusting off the cobwebs here. Yeah, rolling out that intro is like uh, learning how to ride a bike again. You never really do forget. So. Well, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are back. Took, uh, took a little hiatus off for uh, the late spring into the summer. Back to school, back to filming and recording podcasts. So, uh, mm-hmm. coming at you with episode 173 here on the Overdrive AF podcast. Um, just to bring everyone up to up to speed with everything, uh, we're currently in the middle of our our uh, back to school challenge for our members. Yes. Um, whole new point scoring system, which has been pretty exciting. You know, it. Uh, uh, our app keeps track of all that which is pretty awesome mm-hmm. i love it um bunch of new faces especially athletes we've had uh we had a great summer with all the athletes and now we have a whole new fresh batch and, and like a nice influx of new faces mm-hmm. and of course it's always great to see the the seasoned faces i don't want to say old faces the seasoned faces that we've seen for the past like several years yeah, for sure. So I guess seasoned has uh, two meanings, right? You're either using it to describe somebody's age in a polite way, or you're talking about a white person that has black friends. <laughs> yes, I guess so. Or a white person that can actually dance <laughs> and not put raisins that, in their potato yes, salad. Yes, like that video I sent you. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty amazing. Yeah, what you was talking about is uh, it's a it's a band member in the marching band uh, at, a, at an HBCU, and he's white as can be. But Let me tell you, he's holding it down. Yeah. When you see him performing, uh, maybe I can splice that clip into this show. Uh, I think you should. This show. <laughs> so, um, cool. We... Anything else you want to talk about before we hop right into it? Let's just roll. All right, so what we're going to talk about today is uh, a topic that's been brought up recently. Um, and it's, it's great because, uh, well, let's, let's just get right to it. So what we're going to talk about today is a refeed. What is a refeed, why it's important, and when to apply it, right? Um, before, I'll, I'll let you take over, but... It, to put it in simple terms, right? A refeed is more calculated than just a cheat day. Or a and cheat and a refeed and a cheat day are two very different things. Yes. So let's just keep those separate. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's start off with let's define what is a refeed. What is a refeed? So a refeed is normally a very calculated and pre-planned increase in calories. More specifically. Uh, carbohydrates, although there can be refeed refeeds that do increase both carbohydrates and protein, and uh, excuse me, let's scratch that, carbohydrates and fats. But I think for all intents and purposes, for right now, we can just talk about a refeed being an increase most mostly in carbohydrates. And that's normally... Um, one to two times, I'm sorry, one and a half to two times what they're currently following or the amount of calories that that person is currently following. Um, and there are little, um, um, there, there can, we can get more specific to that and it depends upon what their goals are and if they're working with a coach and all these other things. There are some other little tidbits that we could kind of add in, but Usually it's one and a half to two times what they're currently following. Um, it's it, Normally w- what I like to do is every week to two weeks, and then again, it depends on how overweight the person is or obese the person is, how much fat they choose to lose, how much they've lost already. Um, in that, I mean, we're going to get into the other questions, yeah. but... What is a refeed? So we're talking specifically, it's an increase in calories, specifically carbohydrates, 
And when we talk about those carbohydrates, what types of carbohydrates are we talking about? And um, it's, you know, uh, and it's, it's used to help pretty much reset the system in many different ways. So from a physical standpoint, an energetic standpoint, a psychological standpoint, um, it allows it allows your metabolism to kind of reset. It allows your metabolism to kind of rev back up again. Mm-hmm. A lot of different hormones are involved. A lot of different organs are involved. Um, and I think your brain and your body just feel happier that way. It allows us to continue to conquer. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and adding on to that, uh, it allows for long-term success. Absolutely, yeah, of course. Because everybody has this misconception of like, okay, I need to lose 100 pounds, and then they're in a deficit their entire fucking life. Which or they think they are. Which causes causes damage. It really does cause damage. Um, And on on many different levels, it causes damage, and that's long-term damage. So Mm -hmm. short-term damage and then long-term damage. So, um, you know, slow and steady wins the race. Consistency is king or queen or whatever. Um, so slay slay double slay so uh that is what a refeed is now why would anybody take a refeed so we're we start started to kind of jump into it because it's just such an exciting topic for <laughs> both really of us yeah. for both of us mm-hmm. um we would normally want to take a refeed um when there is some sort of a stall in our progress or that clients or athletes progress um if we're having some sort of a breakdown mentally psychologically even physically if you're feeling that your energy is not where it used to be you're not seeing uh, i hate to say the scale Um, if we use an in body here so if we are not seeing the progress continue um and move in the direction that we're looking for because our goal for everybody is fat loss releasing fat and when i say releasing fat is bye bye not that some you know a lot of times it's fat loss is like we're losing something and oh my god it's like from a prehistoric standpoint it's like we just in a sense need to get it back and that's why so many people have such issues with fat loss Mm -hmm. i like that whole idea of we're releasing fat and we're gaining muscle um because we we like to to continue to 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 gain that's the good thing and we want to hold on to that and releasing the fat is really important um so when we're finding that we're not getting the results the results aren't um um in our data it's not moving as quickly or it's a it's stalling a bit um when we're not seeing the progress that we're used to seeing under the barbell the speed of the barbell um our times and our sprints uh on the rower um our conditioning is falling short you're not recovering as quickly um you're waking up in the middle of the night starving you're very irritable during the day you're snapping at people you don't have that level head on you um you're not in a good mood you're not yourself um plenty of times we've both experienced those things and we know from that standpoint when it's time to refeed um so as you use this tool and you continue to use this tool and you get better at using this tool because it is a tool doesn't mean you go you know hog wild and you know jump off the rails and just throw it up to God or whatever. (laughs) It's very calculated and very structured. And there will be times that um, it might not be structured at that moment or that week or within that month. And sometimes you need to speak to your coach or, you know, get another opinion and speak to somebody who's knowledgeable and say, this is what I'm doing and is it time? So, did that, that, you know? Yeah. That is why you would take a refeed, mm-hmm. right? So now let's dive into when you should take a refeed. And I jumped into that too because things are together. things are all connected, really connected. <clears throat> um, again, what I like to do with our members and our hybrid clients is usually 
every week to two weeks um again normally that person is in what we would call a caloric deficit or a decrease in calories again with the goal of fat loss so even in experienced athletes um, elite athletes those athletes who need enough calories to thrive those members our adults and our student athletes too who need enough to thrive however a lot of these athletes still have body composition goals they want to stay lean it allows them to move through their game much more efficiently your body is normally at a better level of fitness in a sense you respond better when you're a certain leanness wouldn't mm-hmm. you agree with me absolutely okay so um we we normally would structure our refeeds every week to two weeks and again that's very personal and it also depends on how well and how consistently that athlete that member that adult whoever is following their week to week their day to day plan very structured so again that doesn't mean that we throw everything you know hands up in the air and say okay i guess what will be what will be and we just kind of dive in with both feet don't hold your nose and kind of breathe all the water in um and maybe drown i don't know but the point is is it has to be very methodical it has to be planned out you want to be successful within your fat loss phase your dieting phase but you also want to be successful within your refeed because everything works together for a purpose. It always has a purpose. And at the end of the day, you should feel awesome yes. after your refeed. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't feel like you wake up the next day and you don't like a bus hit you or you don't know where the hell you've been and what happened and what day it is and oh my God and have regrets. The point is, is it's for a purpose, mm-hmm. right? It's not it's not for that moment, it's for the days and weeks and months to come. Because it allows you to refuel your body, refuel your muscles, fill those muscles back up. And especially with women, there's a very distinct difference between men and women physiologically on how much glycogen they can store. Men store it more so in their liver. They have a lot more storage. Women store more of it in their muscle tissue. So it's so important to refeed with carbohydrates and appropriately Mm -hmm. for women because it is our primary source of fuel not just for your brain but for your muscle tissue your muscle tissue your central nervous system and essentially we've gone over this in podcast past that's your brain and your spinal cord right from your brain your spinal cord the nerves travel from the brain from the brain to the spinal cord and out into every muscle, every organ, every cell of your body, all right? So if we're not receiving those nutrients properly and appropriately and in a timely fashion, then things start to kind of disintegrate in a sense. Mm -hmm. We tend to look really flat. We don't have the nice curves. Um, We don't have as much energy throughout the day. We are (laughs) not powering through our workouts. And this is men and women, right? Mm -hmm. Because Teddy can attest for this too. it allows you when you when you get that refeed in and you're and you're also utilizing your carbohydrates appropriately your body will go for that type of food that type of micronutrient first and use it for energy as opposed to all you women and all you men are who are constantly going low carb instead of using its own muscle to feed itself, right? So muscle for energy. So we want to ma- maintain as much of our muscle mass as possible and continue to grow that lean mass. We want to allow those carbohydrates to be used for energy. That's that first line of defense. Mm-hmm. So we should always have that line of defense <coughs> ready to go. Excuse me, sorry. Um, and again, we're always talking about fruits and vegetables, whole grains, um, starchy carbohydrates, like you have your you know fruits and vegetables all different kinds of course the rainbow whole grains oats quinoa rice pastas uh whatever works for you couscous um 
And then we're talking about things like um, starchy carbohydrates in different forms, like potatoes, sweet potatoes, butternut squash, any of the heartier squashes, whole grain breads, you know, sprouted grain breads, things that are as unprocessed as possible, maple syrup, raw honey. There's a time and a place for a fruit juices, like a wild blueberry juice or a pomegranate juice. There's always a time and a place to fit those things in, especially on a refeed. So. There you go. I mean. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. This changing in the seasons is uh, really messing with my allergies. This Indian summer, I know. Not that I don't enjoy this cooler weather coming ahead. But uh, anyway, back to the refeed. Um, you know, that, that, that's, that's pretty simple and straightforward. What a refeed is, why it's important, and when to take one, right? And then uh, if I could add on to when to take one, uh, repeating what you had said, you mm-hmm. know, it's, uh, it's, it's once every 7 to 14 days. That's, that's what you said. Yeah, right? 7 to 14 days, However, 1 to 2 weeks. However, like yep. it's, it's also dependent upon, uh, you know, how well that, that individual is following the plan. Your, yeah, your protocol. Right? So it's like, you know, if you're three days in and you throw your diet out the window on a fucking Wednesday just because you felt like it, you know, and then you have a scheduled refeed that weekend or even the next one, chances are you're probably not going to, to take that. We're mm-hmm. probably going to have you push that back. And again, it's very structured and very methodical. Mm-hmm. Like, there, it's calculated. How many calories are you taking in throughout the week? How many calories do you need for that refeed? Mm-hmm. And what types of foods are you eating? And the more, you know, look, we're using these words and the more overweight, the more obese, the more fat mass that person is, is you know, kind of focused on losing or releasing, you know, it, a, a bi-weekly refeed just might not be appropriate right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and you have to be on, like this person, you know, if you're working with a coach or even doing, these, doing this on your own, you, you have to be honest with yourself and say, Am I due for one? Is it have I really been utilizing like all of these um, suggestions properly? And am I really pushing myself enough? Um, am I following all of my habits? Am I you know really starting to change things in my life for the better? Um, are you are you strength training? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Re- that's gonna be resistance yeah. training is prime primary. True because resistance training. True. Not true, true. running on a treadmill for 30 minutes or, or riding a bike for 15 minutes and then hopping off and doing five-pound curls right. for 25 minutes. It has We're to be... We're talking like actual strength training. Right. And it has to be, you know, creating muscle damage, metabolic stress, um, building that heat and, and um, building that heat and that uh, burn within the muscle. Like, there's very specific ways resistance training is... Um, well, well, it needs to be done properly. And if it's not, then, I mean, that's why with weight loss, mm-hmm. the majority of the time with weight loss, at least one quarter of that weight loss is muscle tissue. And that's, that's minimum, right? Mm-hmm. So we always prioritize strength training here, obviously. But resistance training, appropriate resistance training within um, kind of the grand scheme of lifting heavy, really lifting heavy and pushing your body you know we want to be able to create these adaptations push your body so that it understands that it needs to adapt yes right Mm -hmm. i mean so important and you need to feel your body appropriately if that person has a higher amount of fat mass they have much more fuel in a sense to work with and this refeed is not appropriate for them right now Mm -hmm. again that, that that's why you know working with a coach is so important yes it also takes the stress out of your life instead of you having to figure out all the math and the timing, the scheduling of everything. Mm-hmm. Right? And you're being you know? guided. Yeah. That's what we like to do here. Just keep everything as simple as possible. You literally walk in the doors. You tell us your goals. We design everything for you. We give you a realistic timeline. And then we even show you how to sustain those goals over time because there's nothing worse than hitting a goal and then regressing and having to fight harder to get back to it instead of continuing to succeed beyond that time after time, year after year. 
right? So um, I think that was great. Anything else to add on a refeed? Well, thank you, sir. I try my best. You're welcome. With thanks. <laughs> so uh, that's that's it. That's all we have for you this week. Um, again, just to re- review, we spoke about what is a refeed, why it's important, and when to take one, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, with that being said, we are out. We'll catch you guys next week on another episode of Overdrive AF. Thanks for tuning in. Glad to see you guys all back here again. And peace. Bye.